What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be going over a ton of stuff that's coming soon to Blade HQ. Um, the, uh, the main reason for this video, as I'm sure you could surmise by the thumbnail, is to bring uh, to light or to make people aware of the release of the Blade HQ exclusive Paramilitary 2 Tanto in Jade and CPM M4. Uh, these are going to be dropping uh, January 29th at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time or 11 o'clock Central Standard Time or 12 o'clock noon or 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to make this easy on you guys. The very first link in the description of the video you're watching right now uh, will actually take you directly to these two guys right here you can click on this little button that says email me or you can do what i'm gonna do and i'm just gonna sit there in front of my computer and watch it like a hawk why because uh these are the types of exclusives that are gone in an extremely short amount of time i can't say exactly i don't work for blade hq i don't work for spider co i'm not a professional at this i gotta stand in line like you guys and wait and try to get my hands on this stuff if you're not interested in this, that's okay. But this is the kind of stuff that people, you know, some people come to my channel to be made aware of. And uh, I want to make sure that you guys are aware. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll do a uh, countdown timer to help you guys out, out with that as well. I want to make sure um, that uh, the people that watch my channel, that everybody's got a good shot at this. Um, I'm definitely, definitely going to be picking up a Spyderco uh, M4 Tanto uh, with the DLC coding. That just looks wonderful to me and it brings uh it, it brings the pm2 back to life um in my opinion um 199 dollars uh, i don't think that's a bad price for what it is uh these this these are the types of knives that you know once they're gone the secondary market jacks the prices way up which is it's just what happens you know so yeah get your hands on one for a reasonable price and then be there uh, on January 29th at, uh, at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, uh, 11 o'clock Central Standard Time, or 12 p.m. or 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. I think, that all got, I, think I got that all correct. Um, anyways, there's a whole bunch of other uh, really cool stuff that's coming. And I wanted to make, uh, that's new arrivals, we're going to do coming soon. Whole bunch of new stuff now that we have transitioned into 2021, and I want to kind of go over this stuff with you guys. I will link this page, this exact page that I'm at, directly under the PM2 uh, Tanto page, and also do individual links, you know, for stuff that I think is really interesting. Um, that way, people who don't want to sit through this whole screen recorded thing, that's fine. I get it. I'll link the page, and so you can go right through uh, yourself. But uh, for those people who want to stick around, I'm going to add some commentary. Some of this stuff I've actually handled. Uh, thanks to some companies reaching out to me. But a lot of it I haven't, and I just kind of want to go over stuff that I think is interesting. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. You can find a link for my Patreon down in the description as well. And please, like I said earlier, follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and take a look at this stuff. If you guys have been watching my channel, you'll know that I actually did get to handle the, uh, is it Jens Anzo? I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing his, his name. The capsule, the mini, the uh, it's a manual OTF. Um, and it's also not sharp on both sides. This will be uh, a solution, uh, a legal solution for a lot of people who uh, live in areas that are restricted by one or multiple elements of knives like this. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Benchmade bug outs, uh, carbon fiber. I mean, this is, it's going to be popular because it's a bug out. But this one's carbon fiber and S90V for $255. Sure is expensive, but I know how much people love the bug out. And I think the combination of blue and carbon fiber is going to attract a lot of people. This one is much much more interesting to me much more interesting i actually got to speak with blade hq uh about a bunch of this stuff here i'm sorry not blade hq benchmade about a bunch of this stuff this one um i really really enjoyed the uh the aluminum version of the bailout it just added some much needed solidity to the model and i have a feeling that i'll have somewhat the same experience uh comparing and contrasting between the original Grivery bug out and the aluminum bug out. I also think this is cool because we have like magenta standoffs and a magenta uh, thumb stud and the fluting, I guess we're going to call this flute. I don't know, maybe I don't know what fluting is. Anyways, I like the look of the aluminum on this guy and it's, this is Bowler M390. This is a good looking knife. It's expensive, but it's a good looking knife. 
And I've been handling a lot of Benchmades here lately, and I can tell you guys, anybody who's, you know, worried about, you know, quality control, every new model of Benchmade or new variant of Benchmade that I've handled has been very, very good on the quality front. Um, so I would say uh, that might be one to, uh, to give a shot, you know, if you're not interested in the carbon fiber version. I have one of these drivers. Um, actually, no, I have one that's just really similar. Is this a collaboration? Hang on a sec. This says CRKT. Uh, designer Joe Wu. I wonder if it's the same, because, like, the one that I've got is in titanium, and it was, <laughs> it was like, a hundred bucks. Uh, $18.95. Yeah, that's an excellent deal. That's a great driver if it functions exactly the same as mine. This area down here has got bearings underneath it, so it, it basically stays with your palm as you use your thumb and index finger to rotate this part of it. It's a good driver. I like that a lot. Um, we have a new uh, banter. It, apparently, this is much thinner on the spine. A lot of you guys messaged me about that. I think that's cool. That'll make it super duper slicey behind the edge. 108 bucks for OD Green G10 CPM S35 VN. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is one of the best knives of 2000. Uh, 20 and it looks like they're gonna do some interesting variants of it. So that would be uh, one to check out as well Oh my goodness, okay um, Of course the uh, Benchmade 945 uh, Mini Osborne I've actually got a black one here with me and it's pretty awesome. So you guys might want to check that out Spyderco small fly 2. I have no personal Feeling of need for a ballast song, but I know I know people are gonna want that we've talked about the autonomy 2 that's coming. We've talked about the Spyderco uh, Tenacious and S35VN. Uh, uh, the Mini Adamus, even though it says out of stock here, there. well, you can click email me when available. But I want to talk about this here. This is CPM Crewwear, and they have that gray tungsten coating. Um, yeah, this looks awesome. Absolutely. The original uh, Adamus or Adamus, I think is how you're supposed to pronounce it is a freaking monster. So a, a smaller version of this at 7.62 ounces, I think is a really, really good idea. Blade thickness is robust, but not insane at 140 thousandths. Um, I'm very interested in the whole crew wear thing. I, I love that Benchmade's messing around with that. And I think 212 isn't a bad price considering what we're getting here. I love the coating on this. This, uh, this um, gray tungsten coating, that just looks cool. That looks like a tough knife smaller sort of tank of a knife. Blade HQ's page really thrown me all over the place. But yeah, really looks interesting. Some more new Kershaws. This is the Strat. I actually didn't get to handle this one. The Claymore. This is also one that I'm very interested in. This is a, a new automatic. Now this is in CPMD2. Let me just, for people going, ah, you know, mad because it says D2. I've said this so many times. D2, like the D2 that you're getting from Civivi and CJRB, while it is a good composition for the $50 territory, right? Sometimes less than that. It is not the same thing as CPM D2. CPM D2 is the powder form of D2. Some steels react to, uh, or the, the powder form is substantially better, and some steels aren't. In the case of 154CM, uh, carbide formation is not nearly as abundant the, in the composition, apparently. So the CPM process is meant to spread everything out and, you know, gain better performance from e even particle distribution. It doesn't, the, the, the composition doesn't benefit as much. However, CPM D2, or in the case of ingot form D2, the CPM process is, there's a massive benefit there. That stuff is a whole different beast. Edge retention, toughness and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that is a, a whole different beast. So before people get up in arms about D2 for $200, just just know CPM D2 is uh, a, a much more performance-oriented uh, version of D2. Absolutely. So yeah, that looks interesting. This is an automatic at 8.6 inches overall. Um, and I'm going to guess that this is pretty lightweight considering the scales are grivery. This looks like the... Um, Oh, there's an automatic uh, from Benchmade's old. The, the AFO2 uh, kind of reminds me. This this area right here kind of reminds me of the AFO2, and so does the, bl the blade profile, honestly. Um, but yeah, that looks interesting. 8.6 inches, so it's not a it's not a little guy, not not by a long shot. It's a lightweight Delica 4 in pink, and what what's the steel? S30V for 133 bucks. Okay, I kind of the 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 K390 one's the one that I would go for. 
Uh, Kershaw Platform Slip Joint Knife. It's an interesting one at $37. Police 4 in K390. Yeah, th there we go. Uh, we have the, uh, it looks like the Wii Banter is going to come in multiple different colors. That's pretty cool. I like the uh, gray. So if you're interested in the new Wii Banter with the uh, thinner spine and the more slicey cutting geometry, it looks like you'll have a few choices. Kershaw Highball XL, I handled that guy. And, you know, as I said, you know, he, he was saying retail something up there. At, I guess it says 85 bucks. Street price, much better. $52.95. Yeah, that's a good one to pick up, I think, for $52.95. I really, really like that. That's manual running on bearings, steel frame lock. Very, very easy to manipulate because of that slot right there. I really like it. The Kershaw Endgame, I can't remember if I handled this one or not. All the models from ZT actually went back to Z, or, or Kaiose. They went back. Um, so I can't remember if I handled that one or not. Spiderco Grasshopper, black stainless steel keychain knife. Uh, looks like a much larger, much larger keychain knife than some of the other ones that I've seen. This guy, this is great. This is 3.4 inches of cutting edge uh, and an eight inch overall knife. Um, it weighs from on my scale 2.85 ounces. They don't have the weight there. Yeah, 8.125 inches with a 3.375 inch cutting edge. And this thing weighs about 2.85 or 2.9 ounces. Really good. Ergos are great. It's got the TDS or tune detent system, so it'll flip no matter where your fingers are. If they happen to be resting on the frame lock, doesn't matter. It's going to flip. Uh, yeah, I really liked that one. I didn't, I didn't think that I would, and I also thought it would be much smaller than what it is. It's a full-size knife, definitely. Uh, CRKT and Leong Ma doing a collaboration. Interesting. Okay, that's cool. Spyderco Yojumbo in all black. I'm sure a lot of people want to pick that up. Um, some CRKTs and some Kershaws that I'm not super familiar with. But yeah, lots of Spyderco, lots of Benchmade, lots of CRKT, lots of um, ZT. Uh, who am I leaving out here? A bunch of, a bunch of them. Um, Spyderco Stretch 2 in K390. It looks like Spyderco is really leaning into the K390 thing, which I think is excellent because my experience with K390 has been amazing. There's a Claymore in a different color, so it looks like lots of different colors available. Um, the new Benchmade Atomus. Um, let's take a look here and see. Ooh, the big boys in crew wear as well. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. The Benchmade Atomus was uh, definitely, like, every time I'd go to the local retailer, I'd just have to handle one. I don't know why I never bought one, but... Um, hopefully I'll have uh, an old one and a new one to compare uh, here on the channel and give you guys my thoughts here soon. Uh, Spider Go Atlantic Salt, we've already talked about that. Kershaw Cannonball, that looks kind of interesting. Haven't handled it though. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, UK Pen Knife for our friends in the UK who have very, very restrictive knife laws. It's nice to see that uh, there's stuff out there, some really cool new stuff that's that's um, going to appeal to you. I believe these are an LC200N. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, for 88 bucks, heck, yeah, I mean, that's great. Fantastic. What are we doing here? <laughs> Sorry, okay, moving on. Uh, did I go back a page? No, I didn't go back a page. I'm just at the bottom. Uh, interesting, the we, we screech? Okay, cool. Patadays still coming. Um, I think this is a new Benchmade OTF, Benchmade OM4850, uh, dual action automatic knife for $272, not bad, CPM S30V, we're in Microtech, um, we're in, uh, Microtech, uh, Ultratech and UTX85 territory here in terms of price, this is a teeny tiny little guy, 5.88 inches, um, alright, um, I think with the blade length being... It's not, well, it's not Cali legal uh, because of the blade length, but some people might be interested in that. Okay, moving on here. Where were we? Right there. Looks like they come in different colors. Uh, I handled the collateral. This is pretty cool. Very interesting, very bizarre looking knife. Uh, it's got a carbon fiber inlay where you would assume the pivot would be. It's kind of neat. It is assisted, and I believe it's using D2 for 50 bucks. So, not bad. I love the uh, Warncliffe on these, uh, the Warncliffe shape on these Spyderco knives. Salt too, so that's going to be nice little EDC Warncliffe that uh, cannot corrode or cannot rust, however you want to say that. Different versions of the Benchmade Atomus with uh, varying um, scale colors. 
I love that gray tungsten, and I also love the FDE. Absolutely. Um, I wish that they had a black, <laughs> a large Atomus with black in combination with bronze or the FDE, and black in combination with the uh, tungsten. I think that'd be great, kind of like what they did with the smaller one. Uh, let's see here. I haven't seen... Ah, here it is. Yeah. This is an automatic uh, uh, Atomus. <laughs> Meaning you pull down on the axis lock and it throws the blade. This thing is huge. It is extremely powerful on the throw. This is... I, I constantly, you know, praise uh, some other companies for having incredible power with their autos. Um, this is like Benchmade's secret weapon. If you If you really sort of, you know... If you put the power of the action on an automatic knife way up high on a pedestal, this is probably the, the hardest firing um, side opening auto ever. I did not know they were bringing the auto version of this back. This is a nearly nine inch knife. 140 thousandths on the spine. The power of that thing is ridiculous. And it's coming in CPM crew wear. Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm not super upset with the price there. Um, as is the case with a lot of Benchmades, I kind of wish it was just a little bit less, but considering we're using some more interesting uh, materials and uh, from what I've experienced with their their fit and finish here in recent months, uh, honestly, over the last year, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. I think that's pretty cool. If you can own an auto, that'll be, uh, that'll be one that'll create some pretty heavy satisfaction. Delic 4 Lightweight, Warncliffe in K390, I believe. Yeah, that's cool. For 115 bucks, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, let's see here. New Civivi Riffle Liner Lock. Uh, the one that's 55 bucks is a lot more interesting to me. The Brown Micarta, okay, it's kind of neat. Three and a half inches, so it is a full size, uh, three and a half inch blade, so it is a full size knife. Screech and titanium, well, in a more interesting flames titanium. Auto Presidio 2, bronze aluminum, uh, looks like gray coated blade. Spyderco, uh, Spyderco Little Native slip joints, again for our friends in the UK. Uh, that's pretty cool, I like that. So it's a uh, mini shaman slip joints. Um, let's see here, fixed Atomus, not really interested in this guy. Another Atomus right there with tan automatic pretty cool uh we fornix frame lock hmm, is that is this a collaboration mm, no, 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 no. nope okay looks kind of neat though just was curious very monochromatic that's kind of my thing i'm sure it is for a lot of people uh and i, I know there's more stuff this is gonna be a long one guys <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. There it is. They did do... They Oh, yes. Oh. They did do black and um, the uh, the CPM crew wear. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I'm so happy about that. Uh, so this is the manual version. And this one's serrated. But yeah, black with... Oh, that's so good looking. So good looking. <laughs> I love it. I think this is... Uh, I think the Atomus is a, is a Cybert design. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Shane Cybert. Oh boy, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, okay, we're, we're, we're going back here. I don't know if it's Blade HQ or my internet that's a little bit slow. Uh, yeah, more Atomuses. Um, that's, that's super exciting, guys. The, the, the Atomus and the, the return of the Atomus in, in crew wear and the mini Atomus are really, really exciting to me. Um, Spyderco Rhodey, slip joint knife. I, did they change the steel on these? Or did they just bring them back? No. 56 bucks for N690. Little, on, yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, so check that one out. I think those come in multiple colors. Sorry, every time I click into something, it has to reload the page. Uh, and it takes a little bit. Indela and K390, different color Rhodey's. Uh, yeah, this guy right here. PM2, brown micarta. Crew wear or the Crew Carta PM2, as many people are referring to it as. Um, this is apparently, and from what I, I remember looking at the, uh, the the Reveal Seven catalog for 2021, and it did not say Sprint or Exclusive. So this is a production PM2. 
Yeah, I imagine the first wave of these will go pretty quickly, but it's a production PM2, so it'll just be around. I like crewware from the little experience I've had with it, but I like crewware. So that's cool. That's definitely one you guys probably want to get in on the do you want to get the first wave? Because there'll be a wave and then everybody'll have to wait. You know, you guys know how that goes. <laughs> At some point there are more <laughs> At some point there are more Actually, I've heard that they have kind of trickled in here or there. They just sell so quickly that nobody knows what the heck's going on. So just be, you know, cognizant that it's there. Hopefully a lot more are coming. Zero tolerance, zero nine nine zero. This is the one new ZT that I did not get a chance to handle. Very intriguing. They use uh, on that floating bridge back there. That's this area right here. Jim McNair was explaining to me that they decided to do steel there to make sure that it was rigid because that is, you can see right there, that's the stop. So on the original or the one that this is paying homage to, it was titanium, but this is a more affordable version of the knife and probably a version that more people are willing to go out and use. And if that's gonna be the case, I can understand why they wanted this to be steel back here. The overlays are also steel, which is interesting. I understand this area. I kind of personally would have liked this to be titanium, but that's okay. It's all right, CPM 20 CV. We do have a lot of machine work going on, a lot of complexity, right? Carbon fiber in there too. Uh, 220 bucks, do I think that's a bad price? No, I don't. I'm sure, you know, some, some people seem to be more prone to complaining uh, than others, but I'm okay with that. This is excellent. <laughs> I love this. Oh my goodness. My phone's going absolutely insane. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, the ZT-0308 BLKTS or Black Tiger Stripe. Yes, this is definitely an awesome one. It seems like the detent's a little tiny bit lighter on these than the original in the tan. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, my experience with it, I liked the original, uh, truthfully. It, it just, uh, the color of it wasn't my thing. And then the power of the detent uh, was just a little bit too much. I was kind of breaking my index finger on it. They lighten this guy. It seems like they lighten it up by maybe 20%. It's just perfect now. And the black G10 mixed with the DLC titanium on the other side. Give you guys a look at that. Oh, beautiful. This is titanium. It's not G10. And then you have a Tiger Stripe CPM 20 CV blade. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big old beast of a knife. 8.875 inches overall. Heavy, chunky guy. I like that. I, I, I really do. Goodness gracious, okay. And there's the version of the Atomist that I would likely pick up for myself. Uh, either this or the auto. Yeah, nice clean edge. Oh, that's good. Okay, we focused a lot on the Atomist. You guys know now that there are a lot of different versions of it. You can kind of figure out the one that you want to go for, and there you go. Uh, the Brazen Tanto from Civivi. Oh, okay. Very interesting. I think there's a couple of new Civivis that I thought were pretty cool. But, yeah. I uh, like, uh, like the Tanto there. D2. 50 bucks. That's another interesting, not super risky design from Civivi. And I'm sure it'll do just fine. Uh, let's see here. Where were we? There's another Civivi that I was really interested in. Look at the Benchmade Oser Tengu. It looks like we've got some pretty exotic stuff going on. I'm going to guess... Damasteel, yeah, Damasteel, and I have no idea what this is. White and black carbon, oh, white and black carbon fiber, there you go. There's the one, the Keen Nader? Nader? Is there another version of it? With some, yeah, let's look at this. Oh boy, yeah, that's very, very good looking. This is a compound ground uh blade uh, the the uh the edge here you can see that's hollow and then flat and it's a recurve so for hinderer fans uh that's what rick hinder calls the hellfire <laughs> of the custom grind that you can't get through a production knife right that's cool uh we have bowler n690 that's fine in this price range i don't have a problem with that uh, but uh yeah the g10 looks good now i've heard that this is Kind of aggressive G10, intentionally aggressive G10. Yeah, you can kind of see it in there. Looks really great. And it looks like we have access to that fuller. So for those of you like me, always looking to see, can I reverse flick this? I'm going to say probably. It uh, looks like the thumb studs are in a good place. Eight and a quarter inches overall with a three and a half inch blade. So yeah, it's going to be a nice full size knife. That's a good looking one. 72 bucks. I don't think that's bad. Um, is the N690, does that make it, you know, 
30 bucks more than the same thing if it were in D2. I don't know. I don't think it's that bad. Anything under 75 bucks on this channel is what I consider to be budget. Looking through these last couple of pages here to see if, I, if there's anything that I missed that I really wanted to talk about. This guy, let's talk about that real quick. Uh, I guess this is, I didn't know this. This is a, this knife for the release of this version of it was to uh, pay homage to uh, the designer who apparently passed away. I really hope that I'm getting that right. Uh, because if I'm not, then I'm going to feel really terrible. But I believe that is the case. Um, but uh, yeah, it does look, the most interesting part of this to me is the fact that it's using the um, ball bearing lock, which I really wish we would see more of uh, through Spyderco. I think that would be really cool. Titanium and contoured red G10 scales, VG10 for the blade, and it looks like probably an incredibly ergonomic and very comfortable uh, experience there holding on to the handle. So that's neat. Um, let's go back here and see just real quick if there's anything else on page nine. This is easily the longest one of these that I've ever done. Anything to, oh, wow. Okay, Sabibi, that's bizarre. Okay. Uh, new versions of the, oh, Elementum Fixed Blade. All right. And what is this? An Elementum Button Lock. I'm kind of glad I went one more page. That's going to pique some interest. Wow. Eight inches, three and a half inch blade, 14C 28 inch steel, and it's a button lock. Wow. 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 I did not know that this was a thing at all. I, this is one of the few things during this video that I what just wasn't expecting to see. Maybe you guys knew about it and I didn't. There you go. I'm sure that'll be popular. Holy moly. You've been waiting on the um, the uh, Malibu button lock and just can't get one. Elementum wouldn't be a bad knife to tie you over. Civivi Brad Zinker. Something or other liner. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I like the lines on that one. Civivi Knox. Also like the lines on that one. Very nice looking. Gray stainless steel or black stainless steel interesting okay we esperance that also looks really nice I like how that looks oh boy that's cool the we thug kind of is this in titanium oh yeah let me see let me see this guy seven inches blade thickness 170 thousandths they made a little tank oh that's cool I like that. I like little tanks. I don't care. People are like, put it so thick behind the edge. How are you going to shave your grapes? How are you going to shave wax paper? How are you going to shave toilet paper? I'm not. I'm just going to enjoy it because it looks like a chunky little rhinoceros. That's cool. Oh, I like this. CPM 20 CV. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I like little chunky little knives, man. That's awesome. Looks like they've got one in um, carbon fiber as well. Gosh, bless it. All over the place, man. Yeah, all right. Esprit looks great in either titanium or marble carbon fiber. That's cool. Man, a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe I wasn't even close to being done. Eh. Gerber, something interesting there. Hyperflip? Okay. Micarta. D2. Okay. All right, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. About all I can say right now, it looks like it's fully flat ground. A little bit of a tanto going on right there it's kind of neat Gerber doing a few few things here and there that's that's catching uh, catching my interest zilch zilch is that how you say that okay feist in uh, Jade and a whole bunch of stuff without pictures which is not interesting unless I want to see pictures right Boker, Balasong sorry not really interested uh, Buck impact uh, okay um, I know people get mad. Why don't you ever talk about bucks? I don't know. It has to be something that looks interesting. <laughs> That's, I, there's no other motivation for me here except does it look interesting? Because if it doesn't look interesting, then I'm not interested in it. Kaiser Anto, uh, Azo, Vanguard, Beglitter in what? M390? <laughs> what? Eight inches? Jade M390 for 99 bucks? Okay. All right, Kaiser. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm glad I went a little bit. Of, I'm glad I, little, I went a little bit deeper here. Oh my gosh, this is so long. 
Okay, are we finally back in the territory where I've already seen a lot of this stuff? I think so. Oh, there's the... the Micarta Shaman. <laughs> Is that the Z-Ware Shaman? Yeah. Yeah, that's Z-Ware Shaman. Been waiting on that for a while. Alright, anyways, guys. Um, I think e either way, I'm going to end it there. Even if I did miss something. Um, let's go back to the PM2 Tanto. Remember... The very first link in the description will be for these guys right here. Either Satin or DLC. Uh, so if you guys want to pick these up, remember that's January 29th at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. 11 o'clock Central Standard Time or 12 noon or 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so you can click email me when available. I would do that and if you really want it, be ready the moment that it drops. Uh, that's it for people who are really after this. Be ready the moment that it drops so you can get your hands on it. Um, guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it for today's very lengthy coming soon uh, to Blade HQ video. If you guys enjoyed this video or you were at least mildly entertained by it, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.